Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this session, and um, especially to Mireya uh, Lopez Bertrand that encouraged to present this communication, but also because uh, this presentation is part of a large uh, research project on Iberian terracotta from a specific site in the eastern Iberia in which Mireya take part and we share and take some of the ideas to, to present how, uh, according to this session, we can observe the, the iconography, we can observe the, uh, the Iberian art, not only uh, as a stylistic, uh, uh, iconographic, uh, uh, visual uh, language, but going in deep to understand other social aspects and ritual aspects that are important to construct uh, the idea of this Iberian society, Iberian culture that never have uh, understandable text. So we need to recompose uh, the history, the archaeology of the Iberian Iron Age through uh, archaeological material record, uh, especially with um, specific elements like iconography. Well, first of all, the Iberians. Iberian uh, we used to use the word Iberia for the Iberian Peninsula, but in our archaeological historical um, studies, we talk about Iberian culture or Iberian Iron Age to, uh, to mention, to talk about uh, uh, local groups that were placed in the Mediterranean part of the Iberian Peninsula in a clear division that is not so shaped but uh, in, in the historiographical tradition divide the, uh, the Iberian Peninsula during the Iron Age in two large areas, the Indo-European Celtic area and the Mediterranean Iberian area. In part for linguistic reasons, there are two main groups with other, uh, other groups in Southern uh, Iberia and, and so on, but in part for the cultural influences in the Celtic, in the European area, the most important influences are coming from uh, Western uh, Europe, the uh, Hallstatt and Latin uh, cultures. And in the Iberian uh, area, the most important influences are coming from the mid, obviously, from the Mediterranean, from the Phoenician uh, culture first, and uh, after by the Greeks and Romans. So, uh, this is the Iberian Iron Age area in which we place uh, different social groups, uh, local uh, territorial groups in uh, the shape of uh, city states or regional uh, organization in which the most uh, important urban settlements are um, organizing the, the territory. It's not a unified polity, uh, but different uh, small polities in this area. Well, uh, in this uh, Iberian Iron Age, uh, we know that the most important ritual practices, like in other cultures in the Mediterranean, are the uh, language of the offerings. Um, we know a lot of the uh, ritual symbols and uh, religious practices through the offerings uh, placed in different uh, sanctuaries or cool places, some in caves, some in monumental buildings. Um, one important element is that these offerings, these motifs, in a specific moment, uh, take the form of uh, iconography uh, 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 or items or motifs with a specific iconography. And this iconography is very important to understand uh, how the Iberians construct her. Uh, their own image. So, uh, in this case, mm, like in other cultures, uh, iconography images of this culture is most uh, focus on mm, ritual elements or religious elements. Um, and specific motifs are representing the, uh, the own uh, Iberians, the people. And of course, are elite uh, groups that uh, use these images. That, oh, most of them are the, the, the high status uh, uh, persons. 
but uh, through this uh, iconography we can obtain uh, most of the image of how we can how they can construct uh, mm, local identities and how to express the power through uh, some elements uh, in, in, in gestures and uh, dressing and uh, these uh, uh, elements. One important thing is that uh, these motifs, in the moment that they uh, acquire the uh, personal uh, aspect, are um, constructing different materials according to regional traditions. For example, in the higher, higher Andalusia, in the upper Guadalquivir um, well, Valley, in the uh, most important sanctuaries in the upper Guadalquivir well, Valley, uh, the most frequent are bronze. Uh, figurines. Uh, in the inland meseta, in the area of Albacete, it's um, well known as uh, one of the bigger uh, sanctuaries that were using stone uh, sculptures. And in the Mediterranean coast, in the case study that I'm going to present, are very frequent the same figurines, but in terracotta. Uh, most of the scholars understand this uh, uh, use of terracotta because cultural influences of the Punic War because they are dated in the moment of the Punic uh, Carthaginian influence is very strong in the southwestern part of the uh, Mediterranean. Well, uh, with this in mind that uh, there, there are different regions with uses of a specific motifs as main representation, we uh, studied uh, the Iberian Sanctuary of La Serreta, that this is one of the most important Iberian Aeronaut sanctuaries in the southwestern part of the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, and has a long tradition. It starts uh, suddenly in the third century BC, and the moment in which the sociopolitical organization changed from a, a different politics to aggregation in one large urban center, La Serreta, that according to this sociopolitical process uh, needs the legitimation with the powerful sanctuary that uh, link the different populations with uh, this a territorial court place. But from the Iberian period, uh, after the Roman conquest, the power of this uh, cool place uh, shaping the territory, shaping the landscape was so powerful that never was destroyed and remains during more than six centuries after the disappearance of the uh, Iberian culture and growing in Roman times. But uh, was uh, changing the motifs according to the new cultural influences by the Romans. Here uh, we can look at the, the placement of the, on the hilltop, is a sanctuary on hilltop that uh, presiding, uh, controlling the surrounding territory. Well, here in the Iberian Sanctuary of La Serreta, during the Iberian uh, period, there is the, possibly the largest collection of votives with more than uh, 430 figures possibly something more, because uh, was excavated and the collection was uh, taken from the archaeological sites in the early 20th century with uh, no um, very good uh, conditions of excavation. So, but uh, there, anyway, is one of the most important collections in numbers. There are different types of uh, terracotta figurines. Some of them are uh, a small naturalistic figurine representing heads of uh, small figurines, like in this case. Some other are groups, uh, some other have a schematic type made not by mold, but with mm, handmade uh, uh, schematic way. And others are female head shaped borners, that is a very uh, typical. Uh, uh, object in the whole Mediterranean, especially in the central part and the western part of the Mediterranean. But uh, from this mm, different kind of figurines, we can concentrate in, in what we name terracotta heads. That is a kind of uh, figurines very similar to the female uh, terracotta uh, head shaped burners, but with clear differences. It's uh, from our collection, we have only fragments, fragmentary evidence, because there are uh, figures with 20 centimeters, 25 centimeters that have been uh, fragmented through the past of the 
of the time and after the creation of the deposit. Uh, we reconstruct more than uh, 82 figures according to faces and counting noses and these elements like a, a number of minimum uh, elements like you know, the counting of pottery. Uh, well, the construction of these uh, figurines is very complex because it's uh, mixed manufacturing with uh, turning uh, the face molded and finishing adding elements like jewelry and decoration, garnish, uh, hair rings and so on that are representing, in our opinion, high status individuals, but um, something more. The most close uh, parallel are the terracotta heads from uh, Iberian Edetania, another Iberian group uh, 100 kilometers north from our southeastern area, uh, with the same chronology and found with a specific uh, context in domestic shrines, but also in territorial sanctuaries. And art has been related to uh, ancestors cult because their apparition in specific rooms in the, uh, the houses where there are herds and evidences of uh, commensal, uh, commensality and uh, another ritual activity in the domestic sphere. But also we have other parallels and different figures in uh, southeastern Iberia, but also in other areas. Uh, here we have some examples, but in our opinion, uh, the most clear parallel is that uh, he shaped the Rakotas in, in other neighboring region in Iberia. Well, what is important here is uh, taking into account that uh, we know uh, this uh, female uh, incense burner that is related to uh, the, the goddess uh, Demeter and uh, Tanit and other uh, Mediterranean uh, idea of uh, divinization that used to be a very uniform element without decoration and very uh, standardized uh, production. From this, thank you, from uh, this um, corresponding uh, pieces, these borders uh, that arrive to the southern part of the Mediterranean uh, Peninsula, of uh, Iberian Peninsula, uh, more or less in the early third century of the transition during the fourth to third century, coming from the central part of the Mediterranean, during the late third century and second century, uh, were adopted and transformed by the Iberian so society. So we can talk about a, a certain hybridization of or active creation, adoption of this element, uh, in part to create the incense burner name. Uh, name it Warbamar type, that is a schematization and simplification of the previous uh, <coughs> borders with few elements, the most important elements that are uh, important for the Iberian people. But on the other side, the terracotta heads that we are talking about uh, are sharing the same shape, the, the form, but adding elements that are important for the Iberians. For example, are personalized with high status symbols like diadems, earrings, necklaces, ties that are present in other iconography. For example, in the paintings of the Edetian uh, base, we can find the necklace for ladies and uh, the ties for uh, young boys. Uh, of course, uh, we have the same gold earrings that found that we have found in tombs that are represent very very well representing these uh, terracotta heads or for example the diadems in local coins like this coin in, in one of the cities uh, uh, Saitaris in in the area. So uh, in our opinion, there are uh, personalization of this standardized. A figure that is the terracotta burner, uh, because they are creating a mix between uh, a divinity, like is the, uh, the female divinity, but adding elements that are actual persons. So we can uh, relate that 
to the creation of a divinization of uh, uh, families and, and uh, the creation of ancestors, especially related to the uh, uh, uses in domestic shrines. So here we can use actively the iconography of the Iberian items uh, to understand how uh, Iberians adapt, not only copy or not only uh, receive the Mediterranean influences, but transform and adapt to their own purposes. And it's possible to relate to this cult that has, has been misunderstood in Iberian studies, that is the, the cult of ancestors of the powerful houses and powerful families. And uh, in the uh, arena of differentiation and competition in the ritual sphere between these powerful families, and of course, creating an elite identity, sharing common symbols of high status, and uh, adding understanding the whole create power between Iberians and between elite groups. It's some idea that we need to develop in the future, but thank you very much to, to, to listen about that.